Let's pray. What? Let's pray. 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 let us pray through the spirit I've given unto you all today. Come on, give me a shout out to you, brothers and sisters. Give me a shout out to Everybody come on. Come on in the room. And we're gone. We're gone to hell.
kept us all from last week up until this time he's always blessing us every time the songwriter say every time we turn around yes. it's another blessing when we see another day it's another blessing but even us to get up and close ourselves in our right mind yes. see our family and all is doing well that's another blessing having the love that Christ have told us to have for our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, that's a blessing. Not to have evil in our heart. So he have blessed us. He blessed us with so many different blessings. We are blessed. As Sister Erlene said, every time I turn around, that's another blessing. We thank God for today and all those of here today, our elder brothers. LSM to my dad and all, LSM, uh, Dawkins, Ella Tucker, both the Ella Tuckers and Brother Cordell. We bless God and all our mothers and our sisters, even the little ones. We thank you and all the people that are viewing today. We bless God for you. At this time, we are about for prayer. <coughs> Father, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for closing us in our right mind, starting us on our way, looking to you for all our help, looking to the hills from which all our help come, Father. We thank you this day, Father. Thank you for all the ones that's gathered here today, Father. We're asking you to watch over them. Those who want to be here, look on them, Father, wherever they may be. Put your arms and protection around them, Father. <clears throat> Keep them. Let their mind be stayed up on you, Father. And Father, we just grateful and thankful for all the smiling faces that are here today, Father. Thank you for our brother that's going to bring the word. We ask you that you speak through him as he pour out to us, Father, that you will continue to pour your word, your spirit upon him, Father. And he's the one to do the reading, Father. Continue to bless him, Father. And Father, we thank you today for the woman that anointed our living Savior feet. And we're just grateful and thankful for all the things that you're doing, all the things that you're going to do. We give thanks to you today, Father. And we just thank you, thank you. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus, and we say hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him a shout of hallelujah, saints. Truly, we bless God for each of you all on today. To my elder brother, brother Wayne, brother Duncan, brother Sam, brother, brother Chad, and to my elder brother that's with us in training, Marquette and Cordell, and to all of the daughters and mothers that are in this place today, we're, we're grateful and thankful to God Almighty for each of you all on today. Since we come today just to share in word of God from all what the Father have given me, last night and to all of you all that viewing us, we bless God for you, to the whole Bible study group of Israel, to Emel, Ella brother, Ella Ryle, Sister Jennifer, uh, um, to all, Brother uh, Abigail Nethery, Bo, and all of you all, all of you all, we bless God for you all on today. I've been talking over the last three weeks, and this is going into the fourth week, on messages that's about these holidays and these things like this. Last night I talked upon topic of what do all of these things that what the people do in these seasons and the putting up of the trees and all of these things, all of these things, what do they have to do with the birth of Christ if you were celebrating that? We went back last night, uh, beginning this thing, we began to talk about getting in the Christmas spirit and, and how that can be harmful and even detrimental unto us. Sometimes you can get yourself into things and it's not as easy as to get out of as what you got into, especially as you're dealing with spirit beings. We begin to talk about Christ commanded for us to celebrate his death and not his birth. We talk within that, we found out, found it contained in the scripture that John the Baptist, he was the one that was born in December, and he was the one that was recommended through scripture that you remember his birth, or to celebrate his birth. 
And we, we've talked and showed you how Satan has deceived the mind of, of the church, but not just the church, the whole world. Yeah. Now, this is where the fault come in that it relates to me. The concern is not whether the whole world know the truth and what to do and what not to do, but the church. If you're followers of God, followers of Christ, if you say that you are a Christian, be all, there ought to be more things other than Christmas that you're falling after. Sister Jemison did some very good, helpful, wonderful reading for us last night. And it opened up our eye to a lot of hidden truths that's always been out there in history. We don't look at these things. How Santa Claus, and it come back from the title, you remember what it was? Santa Claus. And all of those things. And the only thing, we closed this last night, the only thing that have hurt us is not having understanding. My recommendation to you was sound doctrine. Get it. Hold fast to it. It will help you and it will bless you. I want to come today and talk to you. Last night, I told you last night, was my preparation message leading to what I'm going to talk about today. And listen, <clears throat> everything that I'm sharing with you from last night and today, God give me these things from waking me up from out of my sleep and telling me what to talk about. I never saw the importance to the degree to what I see now of these holidays and how they have really brought in death and so many other things to the people, but this is the number one thing. I never saw how they really anger God as much as they do. I gave you the illustration on last night how people partake of the Lord's Supper, or what they call communion, and for that reason, people would sleep weak and dead because of no understanding of it. And even on something that has pagan tithes and practices, if, if that produced that for the church, what do you think is doing? What do you think God is doing today? Well, you don't have to think on it. That's what I want to show you what God told me that he's doing because of all of these things. And again, I want you to look at the people who suffer the most from this. And if you can't see that it's the people that God chosen, the one he called Israel, at whom don't know who they are, I want to show you how they suffer more from this thing than anyone else. What the people doing in China, God didn't make covenant with them. Not to say that he's not concerned, but he's not discern, concerned to a certain degree. Let me show you what I'm talking about, because I don't want you to think I'm talking foolish. God told Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, know this day that I do make a difference between the Egyptians and my people. He always made a difference between the Do that mean that God's showing partiality? No, it don't. It just means that he is a God of covenant, likewise with your sons and daughters. Do it mean that you make a difference in between your children and other children of the neighborhood? Maybe not. But you're not obligated to feed, clothe, shelter the other children of the neighborhood, but because of the covenant that you are in with your children, you are. Likewise with and unto the Father. I want to show you today, and I want you to make sure that you get this one, pay close attention to the scripture, how these things literally anger God. They anger him. And it angered him to a, so, to a degree to where he gives you up to that stuff that you want to give into. I talked about to everybody that encourages everybody to get into a spirit. God said, I give you up to it since you wanted to get into it. And I want to show you why we're in the situation and conditions that we're in today. Again, as I said last night, I ain't, I'm not trying to tear down anything that you need or tear down any spiritual thing or any good thing in your life. I want that to continue to carry on. But I love you so much to where if it's something that I know that's going to cause harm, death, sickness, 
or any problem whatsoever in you or your family's life, as a man of God, I come to share that with you with love today. And I say that to the whole Bible study group of Israel. Everything, and especially to our viewers, is out of love. And if I didn't, I wouldn't have taken time with my throat scratching to be before you and trying to do what I'm trying to do today. With Marquette, what he is that way. I wouldn't ask him to read all that we're doing. I wouldn't prepare Sister Jimerson earlier week to read and go before all, look at all of these things. I wouldn't have took, went through all of the time if I didn't love you and have concern for you. When God warned, the Bible says, when a lion roars, or because he have roared and uttered his voice, who can but give attention or attention to? Here I am standing in the presence of God today. Getting ready to roar and sound everything that he said. And it's all for your good. I want to talk to you about today. If this holiday is as holy and good as what is mankind say that it is, God told me to ask you one question. Why are all of these terrible things happening right here around this holiday? We've saw 100-year floods is what they call it, hit. Went through five states, killed several people. Tornadoes all around, earthquakes going in, in certain parts of the country that are erupting. All of these things happening right around this time to when the people, not God, have said that it was holy. Now, if these things were that holy to God, I showed you last week. Behold, God, Jeremiah said he's the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for him? If this was as holy as what it, the people say it is, do you think God couldn't have held some of these things back, stop this or stop this or stop that? Do you think he would not have did it? I want to show you, God told me to make sure I show you in my clothing today. The thing that you see going on today around God's holy days, there's a difference in God, man's holiday and God's holy day, around God's holy days, you don't see these things happening. You don't see God letting Satan just run wild and run loose and all of the stealing, killing, fires, children and gifts and all this. You don't see that. If the saints do leave or take a rest or sleep in that season or in that time, there's nothing wrong with it. Christ took his rest in this season. Other saints took their rest around the holy day. And all God can look back and do is say, precious in the eyesight of the eternal our God is the death of his saints. But other than that, it ain't supposed to be. There have been people that I've recommended to go before court systems and different things in this time and see them. Because I, in that time and see them, because I know God would stand up and fight for them. So many other things. I told you, if you look at the good things that are happening in your life, there is a 99% chance I can take you and pull you and show you it was around one of the feast days, the miraculous things. You look at the bad things that have happened, some of your worst losses in life, count it up. It's been around some of these holidays or something to some degree. Satan has no new tricks. We're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. But God knows the church have failed in that area. And I say that sadly. So we're going to get ready to get into this. And this is what God told me to talk to you about. Why are all of these things happening around these holidays if they are so holy? And then when you look at the holy days, nothing like this happened. God bless you, my brother. We want to get into this. We're going to get some reading. Uh, Cordell, bring me that hot chair back again. Our sister is going, our mother is going to come and do some reading for us. And listen, <clears throat> I want to take knowledge, which is literature, 
and hope to produce, give you understanding and wisdom from it. The Bible said get knowledge, and that's literature. But you have, and all of you get knowledge, get wisdom, and all you're getting, get an understanding of all of that literature that you have. So she's going to come and read out of each book that she's reading from, like in what we did last night. She's going to tell you the name. We're going to start with two Bible dictionaries, nothing of our own. It's just stuff that you can literally purchase of your own. So we're going to read that. After the reading of that, I'm going to come back and exalt upon the word of God from what the Father have given. Come on, uh, bless you. Start with telling the, the name of the book that you're reading, what it is. I'm reading from, Shalom, I'm reading from the Holloman Concise Bible Dictionary. And it's titled Christmas before AD 300. Churches in Egypt, Asia Minor, and Antioch observed if. Epiphany, epiphany. Epiphany. Ep epiphany, the manifesta manifestation of God to the world, celebrating Christ's baptism, his birth, and the visit of the Magi. Now, listen, most Christian churches, especially if you're Methodist, they finna, they finna celebrate that one now, are already celebrating. Call it Holy Week. Read on. Christians in Rome began to celebrate the birth of Christ. By 400, most part of the Christian world observe the new festival. No evidence remains about the exact date of the birth of Christ. Read that again. No evidence remains about the exact date of the birth of Christ. The December 25th date was chosen as much for a practical reason as theological one. Throughout the Roman Empire, various festivals were held in conjunction with Now, the, I want you to see who's changing all of these things and all in this writing. Throughout where? Throughout the Roman Empire, various festivals were held in conjunction with the winter solstice. Now, what was it? The winter solstice. Now, this is what all of this stuff stems from. Yeah. Yeah. Pagan practices, winter solstice. In Rome, the Feast of the Unconquerable Sun. Now, spell that, spell that sun. S-U-N. Don't have nothing to do with the S-U-N, but you watch how they twist and change it. The Unconquerable Sun celebrated the beginning of the return of the sun, which Christianity became the religions of the empire. The church either had to suppress the festivals. They had to or do away with it. Or transform them. Or transform them. The festival of the sun became a festival of the sun, S-O-N, uh -huh. the light of the world. So you see where all of this light and this stuff come from? The light bringer, Lucifer. That all of it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to our next Bible dictionary. Let me have it and I move it out of your way. And this one is the Revel Bible Dictionary. The Simple Bible Dictionary, you can purchase your own and look at them. A lot of good information in them. Good history. Christmas, the traditional celebration of Christ's birth. Christ plus Mass. There is no evidence in Scripture that the early church celebrated the birth of Christ. In fact, early traditions differ about the time of year in which Christ was born. Some suggest mid-April, other early January, observance of December 25th became common by the AD uh, 330s. When this date was chosen to replace the Roman celebration. What were they chosen for? To replace the Roman celebration commemorating the sun's, S-U-N, climbing from the winter solstice. Now how did that all of these ditching, they're they so smart and all of them in agreement, saying the exact same thing. Is that all of that? All right, we'll have one other reading out of, out of that Bible, out of that, the uh, Holman Dictionary there. Church year, time of worship to celebrate the specifically Christian acts of salvation. The early NT church separated itself from the Judaism. What, what happened now? The early NT church separated itself from Judaism. In other words, they separated themselves from God's ways. I wonder why. 
Judaism is talking basically about the holy days that God had for the Jews. And I use that word lightly because the other tribe was in captivity. Let's see why they separated themselves and what they separated themselves into. And it's three harvest festivals as the major moments of their religious year. That's Exodus 23, 14 through 16. Now, those three years are Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. The feast that they separated from those three holy days of God. I wonder what did they pick up if they separated from them? Throughout the years, the church developed Christian festivals, Advent, mm -hmm. Christmas, Easter, Epitome, Holy Week, Lent, and Pentecost. Have you ever heard of any of those? Now, you gave up God's three days and picked up seven more of them, or six or seven more, as if to say what God had wasn't good enough for you. If that's not a slap in the face, I don't know what it is. Read it. Along with the Lord's day on the first day of each week. Now, when is that now? The first day of each week. Wonder what Bible you read that in, that the Lord's day is the first day of the week. You see how this thing has been twisted? The seventh day is not even the Lord's day. You don't want the Lord's day. You're not ready for it. It's not a literal day. It's a process and period of time that's going to come, and the world is not ready for it. Read him. The major festivals all centered on the life of Christ by A.D. 400. The basic elements of the church calendars were firmly established. <clears throat> that's all that's highlighted mm -hmm. up to the top two? That's it. That's it. All right. We're going to read the next one is the last two million years history book. And, they, and all, of this, all of these are history books and dictionaries. <clears throat> the mission of St. Augustus. Although the British church was revelant by the Irish arriving from the, we, the West, a church based on remote mustatic settlements could not cater the spiritual needs of the ordinary people. Hmm. They couldn't cater to you, you guys. Maybe you did a little too much. Maybe you did a little too much for them. They couldn't cater to your needs. Read it. To deal with this situation, Pope Gregory, at the end of the 6th century, sent St. Augustus to England at the head of a band of missionaries. The church they found was closer in organization to the continental model with central bishoprocies at uh, Canterbury and York in subsidies set, uh, seen at places like Rochester and Dorchester. Now, this Augusta that she's talking to is, uh, what's his name? Mark, what you remember? Who changed the Sabbath? Uh, okay, read on. Their mission was largely successful, and by the middle of the 7th century, paganism was dwindling in England. Worship of old gods did not die out at once. Mm -hmm. Gregory himself advised his missionaries to leave the pagan shrines alone and to try to introduce Christian worship, only gradually alongside pagan practices. You can do it. You can go to church. But you got to bring all the pagan practices in with that. Lean over to that mic a little bit. The mingling of Christian and paganism. Do it again. The mingling of Christianity. I want you to mix them two together. Mix them together and see what you come up with. Read it. This mingling of Christian and paganism is the reason why Christ's bir birthday is celebrated on December the 25th. You see that if these people ain't smart and put that together. We had Nimrod was celebrating on Nim December the 6th. They had another God, uh, Saint, Saint, what was his name last night? Nicholas. Nicholas was around December the 12th. So they might as well just bring them all in together if you're going to celebrate. If these people through Satan had made mockery of the church yeah. that bites into all of these things, read that sentence again. The mingling of Christianity and paganism is the reason why Christ's birthday is celebrated on December the 25th, the date of the pagans' winter festival. Hmm. The English We're going to name the, these winter festivals in just a few minutes. Read it. The England church, which has been organized by Augustine and his successor, by who now? Augustine. Listen, God's church was organized by Moses with Torah, okay? And even before then, you need nobody to organize something that's already been organized. Mm -hmm. 
won the day, and the ancient customs of the British church was brought into line with those of Rome. The date of Easter and the way in which months brought in line with those of who now? Rome. Of Rome. This is who changed all of these laws through by the work of hand and say. We taught our first message. God said, come out of her, come out of her, oh my people, that you be not partaker of their sin. Because their sins are going to reach the heaven. And God said, I'm going to fully repay her. This is her. Read it. Okay, the date of Easter and the way in which the monks shaved, heads were shaved, were to follow Roman practices. Hmm. That's all of it? All right, our last book, we have many, many, many more. This is Too Long in the Sun. And she would, you should get page 70. That's it. It's three pages of it. No, that's it. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's three pages of it, I think. Yeah, to 129. You're right. That's 79. Now pay close attention to this. She's going to literally call out some names. This is research. All of this is from the encyclopedia. Let's, let's read it, uh, 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 sister. Christmas. What is the origin of the Michael. festival of Christmas? The traditional customs connected with Christmas have developed from several sources as results of the confidence of the celebration of the birth of Christ with the pagan ag agricultural and social... Now, do that, do that sound wicked already? Celebrating the birth of Christ with something that's paganism. Finish it. In solar observation at mid midwinter. In the Roman world of Saturnalia, December the 17th, was a time of merrymaking and exchange of gifts. You see that? This stuff was already going on before Christ was born. In the Roman world. Read him. December 25th was also regarded as the birthday of the Iranian mystery god, Mirtha, the son of righteousness. Well, Lord have mercy. So you already had somebody that you were celebrating on that day. And because you picked up Christianity, you decided to put Christ's birthday. What an insult. You already got a God that you're celebrating on that day, and you put it on. So you see why this is, I see why God had me to bring all of these things to you. And when I get in the scripture, you're going to see how God feel about it all, because I'm going to show you. Read him. After the triumph of Constantine, the church at Rome was. Name him again. After the triumph of Constantine. Once again, what's his after name? After the triumph of he Constantine. Did, he did mighty wicked things. To the Christians. Mm -hmm. The Church of Rome assigned December the 25th as the day for the celebration of the feast. Probably when I see him, I'm going to walk up into the pit and I'm going to look down at him because that's where he's going to be at. I'm going to say, is you the man that did that? That messed up people even almost 2,000, that was 321 AD, almost 3,000, 2,000 years later and people are still following his practices. Do him again. After the triumph of Constantine, the Church of Rome assigned December the 25th as the day for the celebration of the feast, probably around A.D. 320 or 353. By the end of the 4th century, the whole Christian world was celebrating Christmas. How much of, how much of the world? How much the of the whole world, Christian world. No, it didn't make no difference where you were at. The whole, all of these different countries, and look around, they still doing it because of what one man established. If you tell me Satan wasn't working, and that's what Revelation chapter 13 is all about, he's working, man. <clears throat> the whole Christian world celebrated Christmas on that day, with the exception of the Eastern churches, where it was celebrated on January the 6th. Mm -hmm. The choice of December the 25th was probably influenced by the fact that on this day, the Romans celebrated the Morthic Feast of the Sun God. <laughs> you see all these different things that these folks were already celebrating? Finish it. And the Salutarian also came at this time. Saturnalia also came at this time. Both encyclopedias plainly reveal the source of this celebration on December 5th is the birth of Mirtha. The Who is it? The birth of Mirtha. The birthday Mirtha? of Mirtha, the pagan sun god. The pagan sun god. Man, you got so much stuff tied up in it. It's hard for you to keep up. You started with Nimrod all the way back from Genesis chapter 10 last night. You see how many people are tied into this pagan practice? So many different ones. Saint, uh, what was his name? Saint, uh, Pete, what was the one? Uh, 
The one we did last night, not Nimrod, but other one. Saint somebody? What did they do in there? Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas. When I say y'all got so much stuff tied up in this and all these sun gods and all this stuff, it's a wonder. You, I'm going to say it the way mama used to say it. It's a wonder you got any sense at all in the church. Finish it. Saturnalia, December the 17th through the 24th, was the obs observation of the winter solstice in pagan Rome. The winter solstice was the shortest day of the year. What was it? The winter solstice was the shortest day of the year. December the 25th. Sun it is the shortest. Look at it. Just time it. They, and they, they gonna, you ain't got to worry about it. They're going to tell you on the news. Just get them to watch Channel 3 with me Monday morning. They're going to tell you what time the time is start. They're going to they start and they're going to tell you when the day short. And they're going to tell you the next, this was the shortest day of the year. And they're going to just go on and just laughing and everything. And other people celebrating their God. And you, you church people, you had not picked that one up yet. You celebrating right along with them because of what Emperor Constantine did. Finish it. Sun worshipers, <clears throat> fearful of the sun, would continue to decline in the sky and not return, observed Benelia. December the 25th, as the birth of the new sun, when the sun began to rise Heck higher Heck in the sky. another God that you didn't got in there. That's about six of them she didn't name. Read on. The basic of this celebration can be traced back to the kingdom of Nimrod, Babel. After the death of Nimrod, who seemed to have been considered the sun god, Nemus was born to Beltis and considered to be the reincarnation of Nimrod. What was he done? The reincarnation of Nimrod. Hell, we got another one that come in there again. Nimrus. And all of this is in the church, and don't nobody know it. Well, I ain't celebrating it. What is she celebrating? Huh? You go up the 4th of July, and you barbecue, you do everything, you like your fireworks, you do in there. And it, well, hey, what you doing, brother? You celebrating the 4th of July? No, I ain't celebrating. I'm just cooking hog and, and just popping fireworks. Man, it's the 4th of July. You doing what everybody else know. You celebrating the 4th of July. No, I ain't. <laughs> he did it ignorant. Help me, Marque. Let him be ignorant still. Let him stay that way. Read him. Okay, Nimrod was born to Beltis and considered to be the reincarnation of Nimrod, God incarnated. This is the origin of the worship of the mother and child. What is it? This is the origin of the worship of mother and child. See this stuff, man? It's messed up. Read it. Because of this, Beltis, the wife of Nimrod, and mother of Nimus, became known as the mother's husband, the mother of God, queen of heaven. This fable has been the basic of pagan worship you throughout You probably history. heard that phrase before, the queen of heaven. Finish it. The celebration was also <laughs> known in Egypt. The only difference was that in Egypt, the name had changed. Horus was the sun god. How many different countries... Got all of their gods celebrating the same time. Egypt got them. England got them. Britain got them. Rome got them. Finish them. And Iris was the queen of heaven. And Horus was the son born on December the 25th. Hmm. Sun worshippers since that time of Babel recognized this time of year in honor of their gods. There are many more feasts of Christmas that can be traced back to pagan sun worship. How many, how many more can be traced back? There are many more features of Christmas that can be traced back to the pagan sun worship, such as Christmas tree, Yule logs, mistletoes, and other things. These facts are easy to research and document. In a conversation with a le leading theologian, I was expressing my concern about Christmas being called a Christian celebration. He stated that there was no biblical authority for the celebration and that in the second What century, did he say? Because it seemed like he had a pretty good little bit of sense. That there was no biblical authority for the celebration and that in the, in the second century, believers was reprimanded for trying to choose dates for the birth of Christ. He said that in 354 A.D., December the 25th was listed as a pagan holiday <laughs> on the calendars of that time. He, that, that preacher there, that theologian, he, had, he, he knew a little bit what he was talking about. Read it. And that was only in the 5th century that it was accepted as Christian observation. When I asked him who authorized 
the celebration of December 25th. What did that mean, actually? What, what did that mean, actually? When I asked him who authorized the celebration of December the 25th in honor of Christ, he laughed and he said, the church. <laughs> As he had already stated, the early believers, those who had walked and talked with Christ, did not observe December the 25th. I knew that he was referring to a different church, the Church of Man's tradition. That's tradition. it, saints. Read it. I mentioned the fact that God never allowed nor accepted the blending of pagan practices with his worship. I quoted Exodus 32. When the golden calf was built and the celebration declared a feast of the Lord, I went on to cite how God wanted to destroy these people. If Moses had not pleaded with God, he would have destroyed his chosen he, listen, people. Listen, let me say it this way. He'd have killed every one of them. If Moses had not fell down on his knees and worshipped, God would have killed every one of them right then. All of them was Israel. You people look like y'all. Read him. If Moses has not, had not pleaded with God, he would have destroyed his chosen people for their transgressions. After just hearing God's voice thundering, thou should not have no other God before me, they were doing what they thought was right, declaring that pagan practices were in honor of God. And like, that's all of it? That's it, that's the end of that page. And likewise today, bless you, thank you so very much. Likewise today, the people are doing what they think is right. Why well, get my Bible over there in my book? It's back there behind uh, Sister uh, uh, Sister Pamela. So let's get into this again. I want to show you today. Not that one. You can get, put it back over there so I can keep up with it. I want to show you today why God, why all of these things is happening. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Listen. God is angry. You can say I'm angry if you want. Don't worry about me for making up these messages and trying to what you call. I'm your least worry. I'm your least worry. <clears throat> the only thing I'll do, maybe ask you for something to eat or something like that, ask you for some cheese, a cracker, glass of wine. That would be the least thing I bother you for. But God Almighty, a little bit different with him. A little different with him. And I don't need your cheese. My mama cook it for me all the time. Let's start this in Romans chapter uh, uh, 1. I want to show you why. We're going to briefly go through this. I want to show you why I have to teach this message. And I asked the Father if I could do this today. This is why these things, I have to teach these things. Now, Marquette had on Facebook, he's a Facebook preacher. He had on Facebook, God is going to get you preachers. You know the truth and you won't teach the truth. You remember having something like that on there? Yes, sir. He has some on there every week. I go on there and I like it. I don't never say nothing. I just like it. But he's always doing that and trying to encourage people to do right and stand on what's right. He was telling the people, though, you know better. And God is going to get you. Now, let me show you how God is going to get the people, woman and man, and you look and see if this thing hasn't been uh, uh, revealed in most churches. Because I don't want, Wayne, I don't want this when God knows I don't want it. I'd rather go to sleep. I'd rather be dead in my grave, mama, than for God to get this one to me like this one and let me live. You're going to see just what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 7. Let's read it, son. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our God, mm -hmm. our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ all for you all. I do that, say thank God for all of you all. Read it. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Uh -huh. that without, what I'm doing, I'm doing in the gospel of Christ. Read that it. without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. And I do, whether you believe it or not. I'm praying for you. Making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Mm -hmm. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. What am I trying to give a mock at? Some spiritual gift. I'm trying to give you some of what God has given me. Read it. To the end, ye may be established. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. 
So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are uh, I'm, I'm, well, you in Mississippi or wherever you at. For those, Jennifer, you all in Texas, I'm ready to preach this thing about what I'm going to talk about today. Why God is so angry and why all of these things is happening in the world. I'm ready to preach this today. He gave it to me, so I want to let you know why all of these things are happening in this world. Let me show it to you. Come on down to verse number 18. 18, 17, 17. 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness of God is revealed. That's why, saints, we're ready to do this thing. Read it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Hold on right there, Mark. What, what, what is it now? For the wrath of God is but Todd, revealed. This is why all of these things are happening. All of these storms and all of this stuff. What happened, Marquette? For the wrath of God is revealed. I want to show you that. You might beg the difference for just a second. But around these holidays, what is it, sign? The wrath of God which is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. What make a person ungodliness? I'm going to show you this. The wrath of God is revealed against all ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men <laughs> who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Why you see what made those people unrighteous? They told you because you had that glass of wine that time, you were unholy and unrighteous. But God said a person that withhold the truth, know the truth, Marquette, and withhold it, you are unrighteous because you have suppressed the truth. Read it. Come on, read it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. He showed this stuff to you people. Read it. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Even when you knew all about the, the death, burial, the resurrection, you didn't glorify him. You put more stock in this season, this holiday here, than you did that. Read it, son. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm, mm, Verse 26. Mm. Now, this is the reason why, mama. This is why I scare. I'd rather be sleeping in my grave for God to do this to me. This is, why, this is the reason why I don't suppress and hold the truth back. I'm too scared, prayer. You think I want to wake up one morning and I'm looking as pretty as Marquisa? No, or switching like uh, my mama, Miss Fanny B. I don't want to do like that. Read it, son. Verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Lord have mercy. Read it. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. So women like the women, Marquette? And likewise also the men. Oh, Lord leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Now, have you saw this, have you saw this being fulfilled in the churches over the last several years? You're right, Mama, well, well. So this is the reason why I have to teach these things around these times when God gave them to me. And I'm, this ain't nothing that I just made up on my own. God woke me up. This week and give me this over the last three or four days since the first of the week. This is what last week. So you think you think I want to be turned over? Read it again. That last verse about the men. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. It's unseemly. And receiving in themselves that, re that recompense of their error which was meat. Huh. So that's the reason why I got to I got to teach this way. I don't want to wake up one morning and I'll be like that, mama. I just don't. I hate it for the people who are. And I'm not saying that everybody that liked that suppressed and held back the truth and didn't know it. But there's a lot of them in the church. That's the reason why God got you. Both women and men. So I don't want to wake up like that one morning. You don't want your dad like that, do you? <laughs> if I do, you all wang, you take a two by four and you try, like Mr. Farquhar said, you knock everything out of my. <laughs> so I'm going to just do what's right so I'm never confronted with stuff like that let's get into this uh, Jeremiah chapter 6 I want to show you why and that was just the scripture that I asked the father about to show I want to show you why all of this calamity and all this stuff is in so you know pay, pay close attention with him pray for me 
Jeremiah 6 and verse 16 says, Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where you want me to ask for my question? The old path. Uh -huh. Where is the good way and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. If you go, go in God's old way before they change all this pagan stuff, you walk in there, you're going to find rest for your soul. It'll be good for you. Read on. But they said, we will not walk therein. I ain't following you what you said, Brother Mark. Read I, it. Also, I said, watchmen over you. Saying, I told you this in Amos last night. When God sent Amos down there to preach, Amos was preaching to that man so hard, Lady Shanita. He told him, you're going to die. And he said, I don't, don't you never prophesy in there again. Amos said, that's all right. I ain't got to prophesy. You know what? Your wife is a harlot. <laughs> man, that tickled me when he told that mom, when he told that man that last night. <laughs> Talked about his wife. Talked bad about his children. And the man couldn't say nothing. All he had to do was to go there and lay down and die like God, the man of God said he would. Look at this. He said, watchmen's over, verse 17. Also, I said, watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. Listen to what Brother Mark said. But they said, we will not hearken. I don't care. We got it. We got already done bought our stuff, and we ain't going to listen to them. Read it. Therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Who going to do that, Mark? Quack? God. God is mad. I want to show you why he's mad. What is he going to bring up on the people? Evil. And then listen to this. I'm going to just take about three verses to show you that. I'm going to bring evil up on the people. Why come, son? Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, hmm. nor to my law, but rejected it. Mm, mm, mm. Read it. To, Verse 20. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Shabbat? And the sweet came from a swat well, far country. What are you country. doing bringing your offering in there? I don't need that. Verse 21 said. Your uh, your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifice is sweet unto me. Therefore, thus said the Lord. What you got to say, God? Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before Who's this Who's stumbling people. more in the world now? Israel. Huh? What you going to lay in front of the people, Father? A stumbling block. I'm going to lay stumbling blocks in their pathway. What's it going to do, my quick? And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friends shall perish. Everybody that do these things. I want to show you the, the, the first Psalm 78. The first, I want to show you why God is angry. He told me to show you why all of these things are happening in the world today. And then I'm going to close it and show you that around God's holy day, then nothing like this happened. You didn't hear these things. Read it, son. Psalm 78 and verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, hmm. neither were they steadfast in his covenant. God said they didn't keep my covenant. Did all that stuff what Sister Jemison said the people were doing. Their heart wasn't right in them, so God, what you do with them since their heart wasn't right in them? But he, being full of, compa mm -hmm. full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yeah, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. <laughs> Listen, he was he, he, he merciful to him. Why come, son? For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passed away and coming not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the Every desert? Every time he forgave you, you still provoke God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Read him. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Lord, have mercy. They remember not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Verse 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. What did God do now? He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. Look what God, he got angry, Sister Pam, because people were doing all of those pagan practices, like unto what Sister Jemison read about. So what did you do, Father? He did what now? He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. <laughs> if that ain't something, Lady Shanita was talking about that earlier in her prayer. God sent evil angels of destruction among the people. All because he got angry. What you get angry for, God? People doing all these pagan practices and stuff. I made covenant with these people. Let me show it to you in Joel chapter 2 and 25. Read it. <clears throat> and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. The, the locusts ate up some stuff. Let me read it. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army. Who my I, My great army. God's great army. Which I sent among you. He sent those people among you to trouble you like that. And I know, it, I know it's not good preaching the song, but it'll help you. 
You want to know why all of the things that are going on in this world now? If this is supposed to be such a holy time, holy season, God's anger, when his anger is there, I want to show you. I got to show you why he get that way. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 27. In verse 27. Pay close attention to this. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with his anger. In what the, is it, my question? Burning with his anger. God, why are you so mad? Why are you so mad, Father? And the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation and his tongue as of devouring fire. Lord, have mercy. He got to be mad. Oh, I remember one day we did some stuff. Lonzo, he was running in the house. And made mama so mad, he run his head into that window and broke that window. And mama tongue became a what, my quack? <laughs> what did mama tongue become? Her lips. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, son. Read, this, read the scripture. Help his out. lips are full of indignation and his tongue as a devouring fire. Now, I, I've seen Sister Jimerson's tongue become a, a, a burning <laughs> fire. I've seen it. I've heard these people before. <laughs> Ain't getting mad. Folk get angry. You've seen people get angry and they tell them to become a burning fire. You know what it means, don't you? <laughs> you, know, you know what it means when your tongue become a burning The James said that the tongue is, <laughs> you know the scripture, you know how y'all are. Get mad and say everything. I tell them a piece. Read that. But God's tongue became a All of this is because he got angry. I want to show you why he got so angry. What verse you're reading at, 28. Son? 28. And his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people. A, a, a bridle in the jaws of the people? Why come, my question? Causing them to error. It's going to cause the people to error. Now, God, why are you so mad at all of these people? Now, pay close attention to this, my question. Read it. Verse number 29. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity. <laughs> when a what now? A holy solemnity. Now, listen, Shanita. They didn't keep the holy day. They were supposed to keep God's holy day, and they didn't keep God's holy day. And God got mad. He saw you over there at the holidays. And not the holiday year. Not that song with what you call saying. The holidays, which y'all was celebrating, the pagan practice, he saw you going all out of the way for them. And then on his holy day, you couldn't come. You talked about them. I ain't going down in no woods. I ain't going to do this. And they, they fooled out there in them tents. And, and Brother Mark is the fool too. Hold on for a minute. God's mouth is going to get you, buddy. Read that verse 29 again. See what the people wasn't doing, why God got so angry at him. Ye shall have a song as in the <laughs> night when a holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord. You supposed to be over there with them, with them when they playing them horns over there, when Abigail and them and LD and them were playing them horns, and Marquette and them were on that thing, and everybody was singing. You should have been right over there with them. You couldn't come to the holy days. But you find, you find all reason to go and cook all of these chitlins and all of these things for the holidays. So you see why God is so angry? I would just want to help you with what he told me to help you with today. What verse you at? Verse 30. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. What do you, I want to know what he's going to say. Rule we. It and shall show the lightning down of his arm with he, the indignation. He's he gonna do what, my quest? Show the lightning down of his arm oh, Lord. Lord with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a divine fire. I'm going in the house. I'm not staying over with you. I'm going in the house. Read it. With scattering and tempest and hailing stones. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm not staying over with y'all. 42. Psalm 42. We visited this one last night. Let's look at it again. God got mad all because the people wouldn't keep the holy day, mama. But he kept all of the holiday. <clears throat> I don't care what you say. My AT is here from Chicago, and we're going to celebrate. <laughs> don't make no difference. Do what you want to do. Don't make me no difference. It do make me a difference. <laughs> but God told me to tell you this. Psalm 42 and verse 3. My tears have been my meat day and night. What you crying for? Why they can What are you doing all that crying for? What you crying for? All night and all day, all you doing is sitting there just crying and crying and crying. Read it. What you going all that crying for? While they continually say unto me, where is thy God? <laughs> where is your God at? 
When, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the, the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of, of joy and praise and with the multitude that kept holy day. You went up to, what, what did they do, my quack? They kept holy see, day. when you kept the holy day, you weren't doing all that crap. But now since you ain't got nothing but holiday, all they're going to do is bring tears in your eye. You cry because you done spent all that money for somebody that don't even appreciate you on gifts and buying different things. And they don't even appreciate you. You should have kept God's, what did it mark with? Holy day. You should have kept God's holy day. Because he's going to get angry in a few minutes. John my chapter 10. Well, let's look at it. Let, what, let's, let's, well, what, what are you keeping? If you're not keeping God's holy day, what are you keeping? What are you celebrating? Let's take a look at it. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Jeremiah 10 and 1 said, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. All right, he got the whole church in here. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. What you said, Father? Learn not the way of the heathen. Don't do what the other nation, what Sister Jemison read about. Don't do the ways that they're doing. If they're doing something on December 25th, don't you do it. In so many words. Don't do what they're doing. What are they doing, Marquette? And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs. Now, let me show you what they're talking about. You remember when all, all of those different countries, Sister Jemison said, they were scared of the sun and worshiped the sun, the sun god, Mitra, and the sun god, this and the sun god, that. Don't be dismayed at the signs in the sky, the sun. So let me show you what they do. Verse number, what verse were you reading? There? Uh, verse 2. Verse 2 says. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For they, one, they are vain. That whatever they do, it ain't no good, in other words. I wonder what these folks are doing. What for, are doing? for one cut of a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an oh, axe. I bet I know what they're doing. Me and Wayne went out there. We cut them trees down for several years. I know what they're doing. Lord have mercy. Read it. They deck it with silver hey, and with gold. Still, do you still go down there and cut them cedars? You don't do them no more? Not even for the children? Hmm. I know he ain't doing them. He, burn, he still burn wood. It's hard enough for him to keep wood to keep his house warm. <laughs> they, I didn't give it to him. I don't know what he do. <laughs> you ain't going to say amen? <laughs> What verse you at, sir? Verse uh, four. Verse they, four. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Hmm. They must needs be born because they cannot go. This is the Christmas tree. This started from Sister Jemison said all the way back as far as Nimrod. It may have went a little bit further than that. Read him. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as, as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in yes, might. Yes, Father, yes. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For the, to thee does it appertain, for as much as among of all the wise men of the nations and in all the kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. None like God. <clears throat> Verse number 8 said. But they are all together brutish they and, all, uh -huh. and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanity. Listen, the stock is a wooden, the stock is a part of a tree. Or the stock is a tree. It's a wooden idol. The Christmas tree, that's all it is. Whether you know it or not, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Don't make no difference. I see men that try to change themselves up and dress like women and women try to dress. Listen, it don't make no difference. Because when the end of the day, when, when you pull your clothes off and you look in that mirror, the evidence, it might not look good to you, but the evidence of what you are is there. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> and you can't change it. I don't guess. <laughs> so it make no difference what you said about the Christmas tree. If you got it in there, it is what it is. Verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He, Do it again, sorry. But the Lord is the true so God. So you want to get all those other things that are God. And I know people don't know that the Christmas tree is a God. But God Almighty said, that's, no, that's nothing. I don't want you to deal with that because those are other people God. And they brought this stuff in and tied it in and told you to celebrate it. But read it. Who again now? 
But the Lord is the true God. He's the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Once and the, again, Mark Quay. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. He is mad. All of these things are happening in this earth around this season because he is mad. At his wrath. All of this is because of that. Everything that I'm reading is telling you about his wrath and it's tied in with pagan practices. Do that verse. At his wrath. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. They ain't going to be able to stand it. Read it. Thus shall ye say unto them, the gods <laughs> that have not made the heavens and earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. All of this, those gods are going to perish. Perish, perish. Read it. He had made the earth but by God, his power. All, but all, but God Almighty do that. Say, but God Almighty. But God Almighty had made the earth by his power. Mm -hmm. He had established the world by his wisdom and had stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Mm -hmm. When he uttered his voice. What's going to happen, Mark? There is a multitude of waters in the heavens. <laughs> and he causes the vapors to send from the ends of the earth. Now you tell me that the Christmas tree can do it. Tell me that it can do it. In any other God, the sun God, it can't honor his voice and tell the rain to come down and the rain to come down. Tell the rain to stop and it'll stop. Tell the hell to come down. Can't nobody do that but God. And God the Son, I saw it one day. The disciples was all in an uproar because the storm was out and they were in the sea. Christ was in the, the bicep and the hinder part of the ship and they woke him up. What did y'all wake me up for? And all he spoke was two or three words and he said, Peace be still. And the storm, the Bible said, even the storm had to obey his command. And you put stock in a wooden tree. Do you right have mercy? And you better pray that one a whole lot. <clears throat> what verse you at? At the end of 13. Read him. He make it lightness with rain and bring it forth the wind out of his treasures. He'll do it. Come on, read on do. Uh, is that, okay. I don't know what every, every man is brutish in. Every man, now listen at this man. Now. Every man is brutus in his knowledge. <laughs> and, Hold on one quick. Well, God said, when you're dealing with all that stuff, read it again. Every man is brutus in his knowledge. You don't have no knowledge at all to be fooling with stuff like that. Because if you did, you'd fear God too much. Read on. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. Mm -mm. Read it all the way through. There, they are vanity in the work of errors in the time of their visitation. They shall perish. But you people that both know God true, verse 16 said, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. We are not like that. We don't keep those days. We don't do those things. Because God is our portion. He is our God. He's our maker. Read it. In Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. That's who we deal with. Let's look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 12. And we're over halfway finished here. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse number 28. Pay close attention to this. Now verse number 2, God told you, don't learn the way of the heathen, of the Gentiles, in other words. Don't do what they do. God have always had this problem, seem like with his people. I want to just show you how this thing goes. 12 and 28, Deuteronomy 12 and 28. <clears throat> Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever. I, I, I got to do whatever he tell me because I want Mark Keisha and all of them to be blessed. I want the whole Bible study group of Israel to be blessed. Read him, son. <clears throat> when thou go, does that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God, when the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee. What, what are you going to do what now? Cut off the nations. Well, from, I don't know why he's going to cut the nations off, why he's going to get the people, but he said he's going to get them. Do it, sir. Whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. You do what now? What you say, God? Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Do not them. follow the Roman Catholic Church and anybody else that's doing pagan practices. Hallelujah. I can read this throughout the Bible. Do it again. Verse number 30. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Hey, that's, and that's what, look, look at Israel now. Look around at the people. Look around at you people. You following everybody. How did they serve their gods? We're going to do it the same way. Verse 31 said, Marquette. 
Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For you should not serve the God like that. Do it. Do the verse again. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hated. What did, what did it mark at? Every you, abomination. You bring these things into the church and what is it to the God? Abomination. It is an abomination unto God for you to do that stuff. And you learned it from all them other folk, Nimrod and all them folk that don't, you don't, you don't even know them. If Israel ain't messed up in their mind, I don't know who is. Yeah. Verse 31 says, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord our God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hated have what, they done unto their God. Everything that God hate, that's what the people have done, and they brought it to church. Finish the text on. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt that, in the fire. Good <laughs> One thing, and I'm not talking about nobody, it is what it is. Wang, in your day, you didn't see as many, maybe, maybe, uh, well, you went to Hickory Flag, but at Ashland, maybe 10% of the people had tattoos and followed other folks. Mama and Sister Jimerson in y'all day, maybe one percent. Because if you got them, you couldn't go home. They would take something and burn it off of you. But you look around now. Look around now. Every twenty-year-old, and I just want to say this. I'm not talking foolish because we have a lot of viewers that of different race viewing us. But you look at all of the young black men now. Where did they learn that from? Because they sure didn't get it from y'all generation, didn't get it from us, didn't get it from us. So that had to come after my generation down a little problem under your own. Did a lot of them have a lot of tattoo when you went? So you see how these things, where, who learned that? Because see, that, that was not a thing. They, you just didn't do it. But now... And I'm not talking about it, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And I'm not saying whether it is or not. It's not for me. I, I will say that. But where did you learn that from? Who did you learn that from? Who did you learn? Come here, Jeremiah. I can't do it. These folks are laughing. Come here. Hurry up. Get up here before, before you get a whooping. <clears throat> I can do him like this. And they're clean. <clears throat> Y'all learn that from. That's why, and this is, don't, don't, don't criticize me for doing it here. If you don't say nothing to all them young boys out there that's 20, 30, don't say nothing to me by putting their pants down today. I don't want to hear it. Come around a little bit, y'all. Come around. He don't want to do it. Where, where did y'all, they clean, they clean, they brand new. So, where did y'all learn, hey, where did y'all learn this from? And see, the boy, they don't do it. They're walking around, they'll pull them down. Better not do that no more. <laughs> Go on over there. You better not. Where did y'all learn those ways from? But yeah, yeah. y'all, they didn't used to have it in your day. Wasn't like that in my day. Huh? I know they do it everywhere. I could see my grandma Zelma. I could see one of her grandchildren and one of her nieces and nephews. I bet that I bet you wouldn't have did it but one time. <laughs> I bet you wouldn't have did it but one time. Let's get back to where we was at, son. Verse 32 says, What things soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto it, nor diminish from if it. If I gave you the holy days, don't add nothing to them. And don't take nothing from them. Psalm 106. <clears throat> oh, Israel. Watch this. Watch how back and forward. Uh, 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 God's people are saying Psalms 106 and verse 3 <clears throat> Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times Hallelujah. Read it, Remember me O Lord mm -hmm. with thy, the favor that thou bearest unto thy Hallelujah. people Hallelujah. Oh visit me with thy salvation Please, Father. that I may see the good of thy chosen Hallelujah. that I may rejoice in the gladness of Hallelujah. thy nation that I may glory with thine inheritance Hallelujah. What did the people do Marquette? Oh uh, 
We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. I wonder what did they do? I, I wonder what they do, prayer. We have done e wickedly. Uh -huh. Our fathers understood not the wonders in the in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. You know what they did, Alan Duncan? You remember it? And as soon as they got into the wilderness, they built the calf over there that Sister Jimerson was just reading about. Read on, son. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. God, why did you do it? For his name's the only sake. Reason, I used to hear mama tell you. If it, wow, the only reason I ain't getting you. Say, well, point your, Pam, you ever had to point your finger at you like that? You know you finna get it then. Read it, son. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's he sake. For his name sake. That he might make his mighty power to be known. Hmm. Verse 12. 12. Them, then believed they his words. They believed. They sang his praise. Oh, they got to singing and praying. You know how sometimes you be so wicked and doing then all of a sudden you done turn around and you back right. And then just a few minutes, look what happened to him again, Mark. Verse 13. <laughs> they soon forgot his works. <laughs> now who who can do that other than Israel? One minute you this way, and the next minute you jump in the shower. Next minute you back out tunnel. One minute you back. Ain't nobody do that but Israel. Can't nobody do it like y'all but y'all. <laughs> Lord have mercy. What verse is that? That's verse 13. They waited not for his counsel. They didn't wait for him. Verse number 35 says. But were minded among the heathen. No, but but were mingled among the heathen. What did they do, Marquette? And mingled I among told the you, heathen. Everywhere you turn around there, you know who the among the people doing what they doing? You done mingled your little self in there doing what they doing. You didn't know nothing about all of that stuff. From the tattoos, the sagging on the britches, and nothing else. You didn't know none. Of, you saw somebody else doing it. You didn't find your little self mingling in there doing what they doing. Bringing shame to your mama and daddy and grandma. The old saying used to be, Wayne, if grandma could see what you doing, she would turn over in her grave. If my grandma could see it, and the devil was enough power in her, she wouldn't turn over. She would get up. <laughs> I know her. Come here, baby. Come here, granny. Granny want to talk to you. Come here. <laughs> what verse you at? At the end of 35. 35, read that verse 30 again. What they but, do? but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works, and they served their idols, which were oh, snare. What did they do, Marquette? Serve their idols. They mingled among the Gentiles, they served their idols, and what became to them? Which were a snare unto it them. It became a snare. What verse is that? 36. It became a snare unto the people. See, this, this is what the people don't see, Mama. While all of these things are going on, well, it's okay. Well, if you believe it is, just, just, I pray God mercy over your soul. It became a snack to the people. Read it. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Mm, mm, Verse mm. 40. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his what, people. What, my quick, what made God angry? The wrath of the Lord. All because you did a lot of that stuff what Sister Jimerson told you about. So this is the thing that have brought the wrath and the anger of God in. Yeah. This is it. Read that thing. Therefore, therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. God hated his own inheritance. And you think, this is like I said, I never saw this to this deep. Now have you all ever, Jeremiah, stop it. Have you ever hated your children? You ever hated your children? Ooh, you look just like your daddy. Ooh, I just can't. I've heard people say that, and I thank God my mama didn't do us like that. But this is the way God did his people. God said, because of you doing all this stuff, abhorred mean hated. He loved them less. Read that text again. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. His own inheritance. Read it. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen. What did he do, my queen? Gave them into the hand of the heathen. You see why we so blessed, Anita, with all of these curses and stuff and why people rule your, rule your back with a rod of iron, afflict you, don't pay your right on the job and do that. You see why? God gave you over. And until you return and come out of that stuff you're in, you ain't going to get out of it. Read it. And they hated, and they that hated them ruled over them. Mm -hmm. Their enemies also oppressed them, yes, they and they were brought into subjection under their hands. All of this stuff is because God's wrath come upon you, not the Gentiles' wrath, God's wrath. Read on. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him. <laughs> I told you, every time he got you out of there, just go read the book of Judges. Mm -hmm. Every time he got you out of it, 
You mingled yourself right on back in there. Find, find a way to get back in there. Real. But they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 44. Read on through it. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. Whenever, whenever you all go to cry, he always hear you. Read on. And he remembered for them his covenant and <clears throat> repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captives. Mm, mm. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name. That's what I'm trying to do for you all. Read it. And to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, Hallelujah. from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. And, and let all the people say amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, the Lord. That would have been a good one to close with, but we, we got to go a little further. Are there 44? And it's just a little bit. We'll be through. But you see, every one of these texts, Pam, it'll show why God got angry. Every one of them will show why he got angry. Now, all of these, he got angry because of the people following pagan practices. Amen. He was angry, and he let some stuff come, man. When I tell you he let some calm, stuff come, he let them come. God told me to show you why all of these things are happening in this holiday season. I want to try to help you. Where you at, son? Uh, Isaiah 46, 44 and <clears throat> verse 6. All right, let's see what he said. Here. Thus see. said the Lord, King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. I am the first and I am the last, yes, and besides me there is no God. All right, hallelujah, amen. Read him. And who, is, who as I shall call and shall declare it and set in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people <laughs> and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Can't nobody do like my God. Can't nobody do me like Emmanuel. Read on, sir. For ye not neither be afraid, have not I told thee from that time that I and have declared hey, it. I'm not afraid of you people. God done told me and he declared it. Who am I, son? Ye are even my witnesses. Hallelujah. Is there a God beside me? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, there's no God. I know not any. I don't know nothing. I don't know not a one. Read it. You need some water? Let me let him get his stuff together there. I don't know not a one. I want to get those the what's called now verse number verse nine. Nine says they that make a graven image. <laughs> what kind of what kind of image? Graven image. Those that make those trees and all that stuff like that. Take up that stuff and put it up. Are all of them vanity and not delectable things shall not profit. It ain't gonna profit you nothing. Now come on down to verse number fourteen. Oh, you skipping? Uh, uh no, 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 no. You got nine, day. I was at right the end. Of it. Did you want the rest of it? Yeah, you can get the rest of it. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know that they may be ashamed. You, it's gonna make you ashamed. Now come on down to verse number fourteen. I got to see what the. I don't know what these people are doing, Sister Jimson, but I got to see what they're doing, Pam. <clears throat> He hew, he hewed him down cedars. They doing what now? Hewed them down the cedars. The word hew mean to cut down. They cut down a cedar tree. Mm -hmm. I wonder in the world what did they do with that cedar tree? And taking the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest, he planted an ash in the rain that nourished it. <laughs> then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof <laughs> and warm himself. Mama, you know how it was a little tough coming up back then. It used to be real cold back then. They cut that Christmas tree down Wayne, cut it down and then when wood be ice and stuff be on the ground wood pile be done got a little bit low you know what you do with that cedar tree then <laughs> you take that cedar tree and make a fire to stay warm by it the same thing that was married to you yeah. and then if you all would like us had that old long stove with them two little things on you can take that aisle there and you could boil your water on it and make the fire to get your bath get you done all that tree did a whole lot of things didn't it look at Isaiah if I there ain't prophesied to you people in here today, you ought to thank God from where you come from and don't go back over there. Yeah. Some of them became related to that they didn't come up with wood heaters and stuff like that. As soon as that heater, as soon as that Christmas was over and that tree went out door, it got cut up and went right in the heater. And that cedar started to make a good fire. I thank God every day of my life. And this is why, that's why I tell people, and when I'm teaching, I'm teaching what God give me. I'm not condemning nobody. I want to help you. I, I ate of the fruit of this, and I experienced a whole lot of bad things in my life from it, and that's why I can't go back. So it's not to condemn, it's to help. Yeah. Yeah. Where you at, son? In the middle of 15. 
For he would take thereof and warm himself. Yeah, he kindled it and bake it bread. Yeah, he make it a God and worship it. He make it a, a graven image and fallen down. Come on down, come on down to verse number 18. They have not known nor understood. Now, for this, this is the sad part. Since you did all of that stuff, and God said, you didn't know, you didn't understand. But look at verse 18 said. They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes. God, what you do? Shut their eyes. You walked in that thing so long and he got tired of you. So God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since you want to keep on doing it, and Wayne, I'm going to tell you to stop. I'm going to shut your eyes so that you don't never see the truth. Read it, son. Do they have part. not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts, and that they cannot understand. If that ain't sad. I don't know what else is. Read it, verse 20. And none consider it in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to <coughs> you say. Ain't, you ain't got no knowledge to say. You ain't got sense enough to look back and say, now, I had Christmas presents under it, and then when it got cold, I burned the rest of it for the fire. You ain't got sense enough to look back and see that. You know why God doesn't shut your eyes? You won't be able to see it. Read it, son. And none consider it in his heart. Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yeah, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? <laughs> shall I fail, fall down to the stock of a tree? Should I do, should I do all this for a tree? Verse number 21, uh, 20 said. He feed it on ashes. A deceived heart had turned what, him What have messed him up, my A plan? deceived heart. Had turned him aside. Lord, him a mercy. The sea hard messed him up. Read it. That he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? <laughs> he don't have sense enough to say that. And I know this is tough. I've been there. I lived in this. That's right. I can't condemn you or nothing to me and Wayne did, but I can try to help you. Verse number 21. Remember these, old Jacob and Israel. Hey, people, I just need, I, I, want, you to, I want you to reflect back on this. Remember, a church. For thou art my servant, I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. God love you so much. Psalm 115, in verse number 2. The daughter read this, and we ain't got just a few more places. I got to show you what God promised, and then we're going to let you out here. <clears throat> Psalm 115, in verse 2. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. Yes, he had done whatsoever he had pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hand. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they ha have they. Christmas tree, you can deck it up. But they it, see not. But they can't do nothing for you. Read it. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto Everybody them. Everybody deal with them or just like them. Read it. So is everyone that trusted in them. Now I got something I want to say for you people. The church. God chose them. Read it. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Please. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and please, their shield. Please do. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Please. The Lord had been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. You and ought to be saying hallelujah to it. Read it. <clears throat> he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Hallelujah. Verse 14 said. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Verse 14 said. The Lord shall increase now you, you more and more. You let that stuff go. He's going to do it for you. I'm going to show it to you in a few minutes in the law. Read it. And you and your children, ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Verse number one said, Not unto not us. Not unto us, O Lord. Not unto us. But to thy name. But unto thy name give glory for thy mercy, Hallelujah. for thy truth's sake. Hallelujah. For what, Marquette? For thy truth's sake. We give it for his mercy and for his truth's sake. Hallelujah. Let's make this thing go together here so we can close it. Close you. Wayne, if I could hoop and preach like that, I would do it right now. No, I ain't. Y'all ain't gonna get me in. I ain't crazy. What day you won't get me in trouble? <laughs> I get to the house and God whoop me. Now sometimes mama, people used to tell you can do it and you can do it. And as soon as we get in that car, mama would tie us up. And they even there trying to juice me. She over there, go Mark, you can do it. No, I ain't either. I got better sense than that. Fool. Fool around and be like John the Baptist, my throat already scratching. I can't talk for a while. <laughs> no, Lordy. 
<laughs> Y'all be laughing at me. Look at him. Look at him. No, you won't have that opportunity. God said that, uh, not unto us, O oh Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give, we give glory. For thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Mm -hmm. yes. Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 1. Favorite passage of scripture. I use it all the time. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had a controversy with the what inhabitants. You, what, you get, what you got, God, against a the controversy. people? He's mad at the people of the land. Why are you mad at them, Father? With the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Lord, have mercy. Because see, if people had knowledge, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Come on down to verse number six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why are the people in the shape that they're in? My lack way? of knowledge. It is the same thing. You remember God said over there out there? Mm -hmm. I'm going to shut your eye that you can't see that you don't have no knowledge. Read it. Out there in Jeremiah. I see you. Stop it. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Hmm. <coughs> Seeing thou hast forgotten hmm. the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now, As, now listen, this is the same thing he said over, over and over and over. I'm not going to even dwell on it. I want to get to the other part. I want to scare the devil out of you. Verse number seven. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. What you going to do, God? Change their glory into shame. Lord, have mercy. Read it. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests. Like people, like priests. Read it. I will punish them for their ways. What you going to do, Father? Punish them. I'm going to get you. Read it. For their ways and reward them their doings. Mm, for mm. they shall eat and not have enough. They're going to eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. <laughs> Listen here. You're doing all of that stuff you're doing and you can't produce no children out of it. Read it. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. You have left from obeying God's word to follow what everybody. You mingled yourself among everybody else and you did what they were doing. Now, this ain't sad. I told you, I won't deal with the other part of that. I want you to get down here to this one. All because, what you said, because they did what now? They left to take the heed. They, they have left off to take heed to the Lord. They didn't listen to what God said. Verse number 12 said, My people ask counsel at their socks. Of the stock, that's again, that's a wooden doctrine, a wooden tree. Whether it be the Christmas tree or Nimrod or whatever it be. You ask counsel for something like that? Read it. And their staff declared unto them, For the spirit of whoredoms had caused them to err, mm. and they have gone a whoring from under their they, God. You left your God. When you went after all those other gods, you went a whoring from your God. Verse 14. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom. Hold right here for a minute. Listen, I ain't going to punish your daughter when they do it. Read it. Nor your spouses when they commit adultery. I ain't going to do it. For themselves are separated with whores. <laughs> <laughs> they well, don't, do it. don't go and read it. That's and they it. sacrifice. That's tough, ain't it? <laughs> Listen, God said, hold on. I got something for you. Don't read it. And they sacrifice were heartless. Therefore, the people that do not understand shall fall. Everybody that don't have no understanding. You go on over and deal with that stuff like that. But everybody that don't have no understanding, they're going to be trampled or they're going to be falling, falling down. Verse number 16 says, For Israel slid it back as a black slide in heifer. <laughs> How far did y'all slide back, Israel? Do it again. Verse 16. For Israel slid it back as a black backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. <laughs> now listen to this. <laughs> That's pretty rough right there. Now the Lord will feed them as a, like a lamb in an open country. The Bible said, child, just like sheep. You can take a sheep and take it around right in the back of the house, and he ain't got sense enough to come around the front. Now how are you going to make it in a large open thing? It's almost like there's no hope for you. If God don't help you, it's rough. Now let me show you. God told me to make sure I close with this and showed you this. I want to look briefly, very briefly at God's holy days. God promises in God's season. I'm going to go to Leviticus and then I'm going to name them. I'm just, for time's sake, I'm going to just go to Leviticus and read verse 1, 2, and verse 4. And show you what they are and then I'm going to name them. We're not going to read all of the scriptures. Then I'm going to show you the promises that God promised and what he said wouldn't happen. See, all of these things that happened, God said they couldn't happen during his holy days. He told me to make sure I close with this and show you this. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. <clears throat> 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning? The feast of the Lord. These are holy days right here, saints. Read them. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Yes, not, not Christmas. These are, what are they, my question? Holy convocation. Read on through it. Even these are my feasts. Read on through it. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. What, what is this day, my question? A holy convocation. This is a holy convocation. You shall do no work. Go down to verse number four. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their season. Now, these are the holy days that those people were supposed to be keeping. Child, when they stopped keeping them, they weren't doing them but crying and crying. These are the holy days that you're supposed to keep. And when they start keeping these other days, these holidays, were nothing but crying. These are the ones when God got mad at those people over there for not keeping the holy days. His anger come in for keeping all of these other days. The first one, Passover, Unleavened Bread. The second one, the Feast of Harvest, Feast of Weeks, what a lot of folk call Pentecost. The, the uh, next one, the Feast of Trumpet. The second one, the next one, the Day of Fasting, Day of Atonement. The next one is the first day of the Feast of Tabernacle. And lastly, the seventh one is the last great day, the eighth day of the feast. <clears throat> Those are God's holy days. Let me show you the benefits and blessings from this, and then we'll close you with one verse after this. Exodus chapter 23 and verse number 14. God Exodus. commanded us to keep these holy days. Three times a year, all men got to come up. Read it. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Uh -huh. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Yes. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I command thee in the time appointed of the month Abel. For in that thou camest out from Egypt, mm -hmm. and none shall appear before me empty. In the feast of harvest, the first fruit of thy labors. So we got unleavened bread, Passover unleavened bread. Then this feast of harvest, the feast of weeks, is Pentecost, what they call it. Read on. Which thou hast sown in the field, in the feast of ingathering. Now that's the feast of tabernacle. That's last time and what we just did when the people saw getting in the harvest picking the corn the bean and all those other things that's in gathering all of these have his own significance come on down to verse number 20 so god if i keep those feet what you gonna do for me behold i send an angel before thee god if i keep those feet what you gonna do for me i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to <clears throat> bring thee into the place which i have prepared these are the promises of god you don't get this in these holidays come on down to verse number 22 but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. What you going to do, Father? Then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites, Presbyterites, the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. These are the promises in, this, in God's holy day season. Come on down to verse number that's 25. 25. What you going to do, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread. I'm going to give you a whole lot of money in this season. And thy water, and I will take sickness away I'm from my midst I'm going to take sickness from you. There shall nothing cast their young. Ain't no be no. Uh, nor barren. Miscarriage or barren. In thy land, and the number of thy days I will fulfill. And ain't fulfill. nobody going to die before they time. Now, how can you, can you make these same promises during any of these holidays? Come on, I, I want to know. God told me to ask you that. Well, what you got in giving the people, Monday morning, can you make these, can you lay these same promises on the table? Come on now. Because I, I stand, listen here. I, I'm, just like, I'm just like Elijah. When Elijah said, at my word, it won't be no rain until I say it. I stand just like Elijah today. I stand as an oracle of God, as the spirit of God, to declare these things, that he will do just what he promised. Now, I can't tell you nothing on this one here if you're standing on this one for Monday. Let's read it, son. Deuteronomy 7. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 7, and I close it. Verse 6, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy this, God. This is why you have to separate yourself from doing things that everybody else. You can't mingle and intermingle with what everybody else is doing. And again, I'm not telling you not to go around your family Monday and eat. I will say if they're eating things that's going to cause problems to you, don't eat everything that's in the pot. <laughs> Ella Duncan said that's going to be hard to do. <laughs> Depending on what's in there, Ella Duncan, it ain't hard for me. 
Jag var på inte den där. I don't want it. Mm-mm. That one prophet said they got death in the pot. <laughs> I, uh, I got enough already with this allergies of sinus that I've had. I definitely don't want food with nothing else. <clears throat> Verse number six says, Who am I, Marquette? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy yeah, God. Uh-huh. The Lord thy God <laughs> hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's why I got to do this. Read it. Verse 9, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. <laughs> he do it. He'll do it. Read it. Verse 11, thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and now the God, judgments. if I do do that, what you going to do for me? If what, I do do it, what, action. Which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. What you going to do for me, that Father? That the Lord thy God shall keep thee. He going to keep unto thee. Slow, slow down. That the Lord thy God is going to keep unto thee thy, the covenant uh-huh. and the mercy which he swore unto thy fathers. And he will love them. He will love you. <coughs> and bless thee. And bless. Take your time. Hold on for a minute. Take your time. Because <coughs> I want to get to this. This is what God told me to make sure. Because see, this you can't make these promises. I don't care how many gifts you give. You can't make. You can't stand on the promise of the death. Take your time. I want to get this. Get yourself verse together. 13. Start that verse over. What verse are you reading? Thirteen. In? Verse number thirteen. And okay. he will love thee. He will love you and bless thee. He will bless you and multiply thee. He will thee. multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. And you tell me where you're going to get that at from Monday morning. Come on down to verse number 14. Because I want to show you, I want to I try to establish something with you for this time next year. I hope your mind be different. Verse number 14 says, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Do it again. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Uh-huh. And there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. This is the promises of the season of God's holy day. Read them, son. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Verse 15 says. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Once again. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. You 16? Do I have it on there? Yes, sir. Yeah, verse 16 says. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God now, shall pay, deliver thee. Pay close thee. attention to verse 16 now. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them. Neither shalt thou serve their gods. What you say, my quest? Neither shalt thou serve I their gods. Want, after everything I told you, I don't want you going doing what everybody else is doing. If you do serve their God, just let it be on record. I'm leaving this with you now. For that will be a snare unto thee. It's going to be a snare unto you. Now you do what you want to do. <laughs> Bless God, I love you so much. Thank you for letting me take time to waste, waste your time. I appreciate it. I love you. I love you. I love you. God love you. So I appreciate it. Listen here. God knows. Again, I can't condemn nobody in nothing. I walked it. I did Christmas and did. It's been a long, 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 long time since I did it now. But at one time I did it. <clears throat> My mama used to do it. She don't do it no more. Well, let me get a testimony from her. <laughs> mama... Do you have a Christmas tree in the house? It's been a long time since you did it. You don't even remember, do you? Been a long time. Well, God bless you, mama. You ain't turning back, are you? You're not going to turn back, are you? <clears throat> don't turn back. We bless God for you. To all of that are uh, on... <clears throat> We bless God for you. Brother Jatavius, uh, God bless you, son. We're praying for you and the little girls. Uh, Sister Nathalie, God bless you. Sister Zaina, God bless you. Sister Jennifer, bless you. Uh, Sister Kiana, God bless you. Brother Adarai, Tyler, brother, young brother, God bless you, brother. Mother Chardella, God bless you. Uh, happy early birthday to you, Mother Chardella. Uh, Sister Michaela, uh, uh, Kyla, God bless you. Uh, brother Tony, God bless you. Uh, Sister Aaliyah, God bless you all. Sister Abigail, God bless you. Uh, my Aunt Lottie, God bless you. Sister Alina and Sister Alina, come on and God bless you all. Sister Gigi Grace, God bless you. Sister Lakeisha and uh, Little Man, God bless you all. Uh, Jolie Pratt, God bless you. Hope I did this right. And Sherry, Uncle Steve, bless you guys again. Miss um, uh, Thompson, God bless you. 
Pastor Adams, uh, uh, bless you, brother. Pastor Michael Adams, God bless you. Uh, Dee Dee Patterson, God bless you. Sister Emma, bless you. Uh, brother Xavier Anderson, bless you, brother. Uh, Sister Dinette, God bless you. And, and listen to all of you guys that uh, view us, Sister Dinette and, and, and Sister Jackson, Sister Odessa Jackson, God bless you, all of you guys. Sister Reed, uh, Tiffany Reed, God bless you. Listen, it means the world to me. And I know my message is alone. <clears throat> That's what God gave me. But it means the world to me to let you, that you come back uh, to view those things. And I pray to God, as preacher of the most God, God, it's my job to teach. This is supposed to be the way of all preachers, not to entertain, teach and help the people. If you sent your children to school and those teachers entertained them, you would be up there having a fit on them. So I, God knows I really, really appreciate you all. Bishop Smith, Lady Smith, God bless you. Bless you all. Uh, brother, you have our blessings of the Sabbath over you. Uh, Dr. Moore, Jalen, God bless you. Lady Duncan, God bless you. And uh, uh, Michael, uh, Brother Michael uh, Alexander, God bless you, brother. And to all the others that, that uh, ain't no sound, my quick, they say ain't no sound. Let me let him get that together. <clears throat> Unplug it and plug it back in. Nope. <clears throat> okay, see if it's on there. Did the internet go out? Huh? It didn't sound like you want. Okay, well, you want to. But listen, they can just see the next stay there. And we're close, they can't see the blow of the show for them, maybe to come back. But listen, I'm still with you there. I beg of you all to please, please, please. Look into these things a little deeper. Yes. Yes. Not just with this Easter and all the other pagan holidays. Just look into them a little deeper. I don't want you to be mad because you don't get gifts and all that. Just thank God. Thank God. Yes. So, you know, just please. Again, this gives me a totally different look. When God woke me up and gave me this stuff, and I talked to this last night, it's a totally different outlook. I beg you all to look into these things. We love you. We pray the blessing. I'm praying for you. Because our family, the Jones family, with the Bible study group, and anybody else that's traveling with the Bible study group, and really, really, please keep them in your prayers. Well, along with us. Yes. Um, yes. We speak blessing over all of the good food you have that Saturday and that church back We speak blessing over uh, Sister Duncan, God bless you. She's, Sister Duncan, back home. She's back home. She's back home. She's back home. Wonderful, that's a wonderful, that's good. Yeah, good. <laughs> all right. But all right, bless you, Lady Duncan. If you will stand to your feet, the brothers are going to speak and release the blessing of God Almighty over there to your life as we get ready to go forward. We appreciate you. Be careful again, Lady Shemir. Maybe we love you. So glad to be grateful for your prayers. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just to pray on all the way to see you. Yeah. Bring it down for you. Just to pray on your hand, and you're doing the best you can. Hang in there. Don't you give up, okay? Sister Jensen, thank you for all of you reading. Wonderful job. Thank you so very much. All right. My brother. Nehemiah 13 and 11. He ain't continued out with the rules and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all the Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil to the treasure. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.